Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bravely Second. Let's just continue. Looks like we got a blue side quest and an orange uh, main quest. So, let's always do the blue first. Let's talk to this guy and see what he has to say to us. Sitting here in the sun, eating dumplings. For a moment, you can almost forget that the world is in danger. Huh? What's the matter, you? You look troubled. It's nothing, really. Just that whenever I look away for a moment, I seem to end up with fewer dumplings. It's a real mystery, wouldn't you say, Idia? Hmm? Did you say something? And see? I turn back this way and once again, fewer dumplings. Such an enigma. Isn't it, Magnolia? Indeed. An enigma. Did you hear that, my dear Whitson? This has all the makings of a case. Sholmes. Right you are, Sholmes. Whitson. That's hilarious. Huh? I love it. The owner of those dumplings reports that each time he looks away, his dumplings go missing, one after the next. Yes. It looks like we have a serial dumpling napper on our hands, Sholmes. Are the dumplings being abducted for monetary gain, or out of personal spite? Or is there some hidden tragedy behind it? Quite the conundrum. What's with those two? Another plate of dumplings here, please? And some more of that strong brewed tea, too. And the same here, please. They do seem quite the odd couple. Uh, Sholmes, it's almost time for you to be going. I say so it is. Blast these interviews. So who do you hope will recruit you? The hard-boiled police inspector, or the sharp-witted private investigator? To be frank with you, old chum, I have not been able to decide. Um, uh, uh, one of those, uh, Wallaby Mochi, if you please. I believe that's Wallaby Mochi, Sholmes. And I'll have the same. At any rate, how fortunate you are to have the choice. Really, what a family you come from. This inspector from the municipal police is related to you in some way, didn't you say? Yes, good Uncle Heinkel. Now, Inspector Argent Heinkel, to be precise. <laughs> Idiot, what's the matter? And that private investigator, too. Kunoichi Kikyo, the silent sleuth, as her fans describe her. <gasps> She's from your mother's side of the family, is she not? What? Oh, drink. A drink! Here you are, sir. Stay with us. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but would you mind keeping it down? Are you kidding me? You expect me to keep my mouth shut after hearing something like that? Heinkel and Inspector. Kick you a private eye for reals? Uh, just who are you fellows? Uh, oh, I say, this wallaby mochi is marsupialicious. Solmes, so this is where you've been hiding. I'm afraid I'll have to postpone our interview today. Argent Heinkel, holder of the Night Asterisk. As erstwhile captain of the Eternian Sky Knights, he was once Idia's commanding officer, a hardened warrior dedicated to his cause and trusted by those who serve him by what strange trick of fate do your paths cross anew inspector heinkel pray tell what is the matter you look positively a flutter there's been a homicide in stock for it oof in other words a murder isn't that what i just said never mind do you want to help or not you can't have anything else planned Heinkel, what's going on? Idia, you heard us, didn't you? I'm busy with an investigation. Idle questions can wait. I'll be going ahead, Sholmes. I'll see you at the crime scene. Hmm, something just came flying. A kunai, and with a note tied to it, no less. Quickly, let us examine the evidence. Asked to investigate Starkford murder. Must delay meeting. Kikyo. Aunt Kikyo! Konoe Kikyo. The silent Kunoichi. Holder of the ninja asterisk. Idia encountered her in Heart's Child, 
when Kikyo served as a key member of the Black Blade's covert forces. Too shy to express her thoughts to others face to face, this woman of many masks hides great secrets within her silence. By what strange trick of fate do you... Dear Aunt Kikyo, won't you ever speak to me directly? But never mind that. Come, Whitson, her case calls. Right you are, Sholmes. Uh, hold up. Can someone explain what is going on? That's hilarious. I still think that's absolutely hilarious. Argent Heinkel, Knights Captain of the Attorney and Sky Knights, is now a hard-boiled inspector in the Unohana PD. And Kikyo, lethal assassin of the Black Blades, is now famous as the Silent Sleuth? Things certainly have changed. And what about those other two? Oh, Sholmes and Whitson? They said they were members of a sleuthing club. A sleuthing club? So they're private investigators too? Not quite. Apparently it was a school club, but they've kept at it since graduating. They're just playing detective. Give me a break. Aren't they both older than me? <laughs> oh, but that Sholmes fellow comes from quite the family. His grandfather was a world-famous private detective. His father is a police commissioner, and his mother is a celebrated mystery novelist. What's more, his aunts, uncles, and cousins are all involved in solving crimes one way or another. What a pedigree. So, what should we do, Idia? Check it out, obviously. Huh? Why are you asking me? Well, I mean, as the attorney and representative in the party, I was afraid you'd mention that. They said they were going to Stark for it, didn't they? Come on, guess we are too. Okay, that is where we head to next. I would go to the orange, but I think we should just one mission at a time. So let's go ahead and head to Stark Fort and we can go from there, I guess. So we can do a little bit of running. Luckily, it isn't too far away, though. We just run right in. Oop, I forget. We can't actually run right in. For sale by owner. Stark Fort is for sale? The entirety of the building? Stark Fort's sad history. What a curious place. It looks so intimidating from the outside, but it's also so sad, as if some great dream ended here. It's true that Stark Fort is all that's left of some men's dream. This place was once the headquarters of a faction called the Sword Bearers. You guys know that this country was embroiled in a civil war until just a few years ago. Yes, a long war of two opposing factions, the Shield Bearers and the Sword Bearers, which pitted brother against brother. Commander Goodman was the leader of the Shield Bearers, wasn't he? He was. The two factions were meant to complement each other, one to protect, the other one to quell enemy attacks. But as time went on, the Shield Bearers came to assume political power, which didn't sit well with the Sword Bearers. The leader of the sword bearers tried to ally with the duchy which was working to spread anti-crystallism to other lands then they began a bloody coup without listening to the duchy's efforts to dissuade them the duchy went to abandon the the sword bearers in their hour of need so they dispatched their finest the black blades led by none other than the sword master kami izumi himself you remember him right he was also a dia's master who taught her the way of the sword so that's the truth about how the first war broke out it all began right here at the forbidding old fort it did, which only makes it all the more baffling. Who in the world would consider this a prime piece of real estate? I guess it's as good as mine. Okay, so before, there used to be shops down here and stuff like that. Is there no more shops? Do you guys know the tale? Any weapon? Uh, uh, okay, I don't really care. What about this? If you're... Uh, just don't come to my turf and mess things up. Okay, fair enough, he just doesn't want us in his territory. Anything down here? It looks like that's like a pathway down, but I know it's not. Now, let's go into the fort here, bud. Okay. Okay, so 30 to 34, and we are 39 to 40. So we are um, indeed above where we should be. So you know what we're going to do? Let's turn the encounter rate to negative 50. So we still encounter some things, just not as many. Again, I have that privilege because of how leveled I am. If I was under leveled, I would not do that because then I'd end up getting stuck somewhere and you know your boy Frozen does not like getting stuck anywhere. Okay, so we got that. 
we got okay so i just want to check out how many okay let's gonna go ahead and give it a go but we're also going to copy and move it to command set two to overwrite that data okay right, let's go ahead speed, speed this up now okay so wind is not something that we can do against them noted okay magic just we just can't do magic against them that is noted okay we don't even get to choose if we get if we want another challenger we just we get another challenger it's none of our choice here I hate these ones because I end up taking a lot of damage even though I never even like wanted to take the fight which is very annoying to me like I didn't even want to take this fight why am I fighting this it just puts me in like a super bad situation Okay, well now, I, because of that fight, I have to go ahead and now I have to heal. Yeah, of course I'm going to have trouble then, you know. Okay, so we have a staircase there, and then we have... Okay, so let's go ahead and take this staircase first. I'm about to sneeze in a minute. Ooh, it's going to hurt my leg. Um, I don't think there's anything in that crevice. Let's just keep walking. Ooh, just the chest, okay. That's pretty honestly as well. See where that takes us. It takes us to another little, like, random little chest. I want to get that over with. Alright, where does this take us? Another little crevice with nothing in it, huh? Ooh, actually, that other crevice has something in it. Okay. Is this the same layout as before? Because if it is... And right next to us would just be where Qu Quada from last game was. I wonder if that is still the same. Let's take a look. So if it is, this is where Quada used to be. Yeah, it is the same. It's literally the exact same thing. Sugar loaf obtained. What the heck is that? Yeah, this is the room we fought Quada. And what is the sugar loaf? Resembling a mound of sugar. Okay, that is like... Wait, that might be... Is that... Would be that better for like Magnolia or something? Hmm. I think actually that is better. Because it raises her defense a lot higher than it lowers... It lowers her magic attack, which I don't care about. And it lowers her magic... Or her physical... Or her magic defense... Just a tiny bit. So, honestly, I think that's completely worth it in every sense there. Ouch. Okay, please attack. Use. But fair enough. Okay, let's go down. And now we can go up to the main stairway, which will probably take us to where we actually need to go. What recording time I'm at. Okay, I almost like... I got dizzy there. I turned my head so many times for no reason. I got dizzy. Okay, another phoenix down. Is there anything... I gotta check if there's anything in those crevices. I don't think there is, but... I would feel bad if I didn't at least check. I'm just... Ooh. Let's make sure to kill him before we hit that doom, huh? Okay, I was gonna say, we, we better kill him there. We're gonna be doomed out before the five. See, there's like literally nothing in there. I, what's the point of that? It's so boring. Okay, is there nothing? Nothing. Okay, fair enough. Let's keep moving forward. That's the exact same as before. Blue chest right here. I don't know if I don't know if that blue chest was in that exact position, but X potion. Okay, those can become useful. So I know that way is the main way, or technically for you guys, that if I took that staircase, that would be the, where we're, we're supposed to go. So that way is where I think just like more more chests lie so I'm definitely gonna go that way first yeah so let's go ahead and go this way this should take us just to a couple of chests yep okay just some more pig not a not a terrible thing to have but you know pigs pig I'm gonna be swimming in it once I can get the chomp you know out of the you know, once I get to that island at the end of chapter 3, I'm going to be straight rolling in cash. Straight up. But until then, we actually have to just do normal things for cash. 
Okay, another fire. Ooh, four hellhounds this time. Yeah, magic doesn't seem to be good against these guys. Well, I guess I am doing level one spells, which is fair enough, I guess. But I don't want to waste all my MP, you know? I've got a lot of fights to do, so. Okay, it's a stairway down. Probably lead us to just another small chest here, yep. Staff of Ooh! Oh, I, oh, oh, I totally forgot. It was a couple episodes ago. I told myself I would buy new staffs for people. I never did. Staff of life. Yeah, see, this is gonna... Um, anyway, that's gonna help us. And then whenever I get a chance, I gotta go back and buy a, a rod for um, you. I completely forgot, but I need to do that. Okay, where does this take us? Okay, uh, real quick. Let me go ahead and just heal real quick. Let's do the white magic, do a Kirata. There we go. Is there anything over here? How do I get to that? Is there a secret entrance? But I guess first let's just check out what's up here. Before we do any of that stuff. I think it's just that little... Ooh, okay, we got three enemies. And again, wind does literally nothing. <clears throat> I need to stop using magic on these guys. There we go. Yeah, honestly, you got stopped there, and that wasn't a big deal at all. Okay, anything in these... Doesn't look like there's anything in those back rooms, either. Okay, fair enough. Okay, real quick, let me check for, like, a secret entrance right here. Alright, we can... Let's go ahead and rest in a cottage just to get that MP rolling back. And then probably have a fight or whatever else is going on here. Okay, save, bang, bang, okay, never, okay, let's go up here, hmm, Idia, you're late, I'm sorry sir, we were just, wait, why am I in trouble? Miss Idia, forgive me. I did not realize that you were acquainted with my dear Uncle Heinkel and Aunt Kikio. Don't worry about it. Just don't tell me about any more of your relatives. <clears throat> now then, allow me to bring you up to speed. The victim was one Lord Earl Gulliver, famous around these parts for his considerable wealth. Real well known. He was alone in this room when he was stabbed in the back by an unknown assailant. He appears to have died on the spot. These three here claim to have discovered the body simultaneously. First, we have Lord Gulliver's wife, Madame Golddigger. Next, the current landowner of Starkfort, Mr. Land Lesser. And finally, Lord Gulliver's financial advisor, Noah Interest of Eisenbank. The murderer is within our midst! <gasps> Soames, get yourself under control, or I'll do it for you. So sorry, Uncle. I've just always wanted to say that. So the three of you discovered Lord Gulliver's body simultaneously. Could you tell us the circumstances? We came to inspect the property. My husband was interested in purchasing it as a vacation home. At first, we toured each floor together, Earl, myself, and these two, until we reached this top floor, that is. My husband, a military history buff, became so enamored with this room that he showed no sign of leaving. And so we escorted the madam down to the fifth floor to show her a bit more of the fort. My word, did you see him? He's like a child in a candy store. <laughs> and why shouldn't he be happy? Why, to have such a young and beautiful wife at his age, Lord Gulliver is a lucky man indeed. Mm. Now, if you would allow me, madam, it would be my pleasure to show you the fifth floor. No, if you don't mind, I'd like to look around on my own a bit. Uh, of course, as you wish, milady. 
Well, Ward's a real character, isn't he? To think of buying a gloomy fort like this as a vacation home. And his wife. <laughs> a young woman wanting to be left alone in this kind of place. She's an odd duck herself. Well, I'll have not a bad word to say about either if they take this place off my hands. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, back so soon, milady. Yes, I've seen more than enough. Is my husband still upstairs? Engrossed in the ambiance of the fort, no doubt. What say we go rouse him from his reverie? And so no one had gone in or out of this room that whole time? If so, that would practically make this a bona fide locked room mystery. Indeed so. Mr. Lesser and I were standing at the base of these stairs the entire time. Precisely. And no one went past us to reach the upper floor. And the murder weapon? This single-edged dagger here, it was found on the floor beside the victim. It matches up to the stab wound as well. I've got it! The murderer must have prepared a weapon of solid ice, which he or she then used to deal a blow to Lord Gulliver's head. Genius, Sholmes! Then the ice would have melted, leaving us with no murder weapon. The cause of death was clearly this stab wound. I'll thank you not to muddy our investigation with frivolous conjecture, Sholmes. My dear Whitson, have a look at this rope. Brilliant, Sholmes. Surely the murderer used this rope to lock off the room after escaping. That's our rope, you fools! It says YHPD right on it! <gasps> Do you see that there? A dying message! The murderer is Whit. <gasps> Whitson, you couldn't have! Sholmes, you know I would never... <laughs> Just having a laugh at your expense, old chum. I hate to say it, but aren't those two just getting in the way? You'd do well to ignore them. His parents begged me to give him a chance. I suspect it was much the same for you, Kunoichi Kikyo P.I. Okay. Looks like it is time for us to step back into... <laughs> The ring here. Okay. Um, let's talk to Kikyo first. To think that you became a private investigator. Well, I guess it's no more surprising than Heinkel working for the police. Hmm. So tell me, how does the silent sleuth see this case? Hmm. As talkative as ever. That's some trick to pull off an investigation without ever opening your mouth. All we know at present is that the victim was stabbed in the back with no sign of any struggle. We can assume that the murderer was someone close to the late Lord, which rules out Mr. Lesser as the two had only just met today. However, that fat banker may be a different story. Mr. Entress is worth looking at as, of course, as the young wife. She has the most obvious motive, but we have no actual proof, not to mention how she could gain entry. Lavash! That is simply astounding. I've never heard anyone speak so rapidly. It's like she didn't even stop to breathe. Yeah. It's been a while, but it never fails to leave an impression. Sholmes! She spoke! Right you are, old chum. I dare say we have just experienced the silent sleuth's ninja power. Breathtaking. But Kikyo, do you really think she could kill him in one go with those skinny arms? Quite so! Aunt Kikyo, there must be another suspect hiding beneath this very... You! Zip it! You know, Kikyo, the murderer must have been a pretty skilled assassin to pull this off. Someone as skilled as, say... You! What? Lord Gulliver was stabbed right through to the heart to deal such a blow with a rusted and neglected knife such as this one here, would surely take two hands on the full weight of a body behind it. Yet look at this, this silver blade is discolored and there's purple modeling at the base of the neck, evidence that the blade was coated with some kind of poison. All the murderer had to do was scratch Gulliver's skin, and here, this cut on the victim's leather belt shows that there was at least one missed strike, a derelict weapon, a wasted poison, a needlessly difficult method of killing. In short, this murder was no experienced assassin, but a rank amateur. 
Right, not at all your style. I'm sorry for suggesting it. Which leaves us with the wife as the prime suspect after all. Madam Golddigger, I'm afraid we'll need to take you into custody as a material witness. You mean, as a suspect? Oh, ridiculous! I didn't do it! I can understand why you might say that. Madam, I do not enjoy using force. I suggest you come along quietly. <laughs> what insight, what acumen, to determine so much from a single knife! It pains me to discount my uncle's work, but there is nothing so impressive as the instincts and deductions of a private investigator. Do you not agree, my good Whitson? <sighs> That's all we've learned about Lord Gulliver, sir. Carry on, then. We need to determine the motive, whether it was monetary or some personal grudge. Next! Inspector Heinkel, sir. We searched the walls from top to bottom, but found no evidence of any secret passages. You gave them each a good whack, I trust? A good what? I'm asking whether you were thorough enough to give the walls a good hard knock or not. Uh, no, sir. Then don't say you searched top to bottom. Get some more men and start knocking walls before I knock you one in the head. Leave not a single stone unturned. I want every inch of this fort searched. Yes, sir. Uh, Uncle, I must say, my deductions have led me to believe that the murderer must have hidden beneath... Oh, we have work to do, Sholmes. Try not to get in the way, will you? How about you, Edia? Have you noticed anything odd? Hmm... I'd say the banker and the landowner both strike me as a bit suspicious. You think so, hmm? Well, what have we found out? Sir, we did a background check on Mr. Lesser, but found nothing particularly noteworthy. He seemed quite pleased with the prospect of having Lord Gulliver take both the land and the building off his hands. The same for the banker, Mr. Noah Entrist. He stood to gain nothing from Lord Gulliver's untimely death. Any ties between the two? None. They say that today was their first time meeting one another. If those two weren't in cahoots, then this really is a locked room case. We found no evidence to identify a suspect definitively. But if we consider motive alone... The one who would benefit most from Lord Gulliver's death would be his wife, who stands to inherit all his massive wealth. True, but would she really try something so obvious? So you thought so, too. Let's look into her story without any preconceived notions. Listen, men. Every shred of evidence we gather brings us one step closer to catching our perp. A formal investigation is painstaking and laborious. But if we're thorough in the task, we will surely bring the culprit to justice. Yes, sir. What command! What presence! Now that is what true detective work is all about! Sorry, Aunt Kikyo, but I think the Force is the place for me to lead an investigative team. Surely you agree, my dear Whitson? Hmm. The poor woman. Material witness or no, to be confined to the very room in which one's husband was brutally murdered. At least she should be safe. Or she's With gonna get murdered. Being locked and all. She's gonna get murdered. I bet you hundred dollars. Keep watching, Madam Gold Digger. No one comes up or down these stairs. Got it? Sholmes, what do you two intend to do? We thought to examine this floor in further detail. By Jove, I think I've got it. What? Uh, sorry. I just had the sudden urge to say that. <laughs> <sighs> The rest of you come with me. The lower floors need thorough inspection. He runs funny. That little, little chubby legs. He's like, huh? <laughs> what happened to Kikio? Before we knew it, she had dashed off somewhere. Oh, and she left behind this note. Investigating downstairs. Maybe she has a lead. Okay. 
Oh, Miss Idia. So, I hear your family is something else, Holmes. I wouldn't say that. Really? Grandfather, a famous private detective? Father, a famous police commissioner? A best-selling mystery novelist for a mother? Not to mention Heinkel and Kikyo. I'd say that's pretty darn impressive. Perhaps. Unfortunately, I'm far less so. To be honest, it's quite a burden. I had hoped the two of you might understand how I feel. The daughter of the Grand Marshal of Eternia, and the young heir to the illustrious House Geniolja. <laughs> well, you know yourself best. So, what are you gonna do? Planning to enter the Unihana PD? Or is the life of a PI more for you? They both have their own appeal, of course. Should I join the police? Master the art of leading an investigation and hone my innate leadership skills as I work toward the top? Or should I use the deductive genius I was born with to become a famous P.I., solving cases that have baffled ordinary minds the realm over? Miss Idia, which do you think would be a better use of my considerable talents? Well, when you put it that way... Basically, it comes down to whether you'd rather start your career working for Heinkel or Kikyo, right? I bet whoever you turned down would try and convince you to reconsider. With force. <laughs> Do you really think so? Both my aunt and uncle seem frustrated with my aimless nature. I've come to think that they might even be relieved to not have me follow in their footsteps. Hmm. You may be less of a self-important spoiled brat than I thought. That's some insight after all. My advice would be to just watch carefully how both Heinkel and Kikyo approach their work. Observation is one of the most fundamental skills for any investigator to be... Don't give up! Go ahead and give it a quick save here. Bang, bang. Oh! You're not with Sholmes? We are fast friends and partners. But even we don't spend all our waking hours together. On a case, we stick to our own specialties and try not to interfere with each other's processes. Your specialties? Sholmes tends to rely on instinct and inspiration to make his deductions. I prefer to quietly analyze the details of a crime. <sighs> I suppose we are both the products of our environments. You also come from quite the family, huh? No less impressive than Sholmes, at least. Please, come off that. Sholmes' grandfather was a world-famous detective. Mine was a world-famous detective's aide. Sholmes' father became police commissioner, while mine was never promoted beyond lieutenant. His mother is a best-selling mystery novelist. Mine, a best-selling mystery novelist's assistant. Sholmes comes from a line of brilliant deductive geniuses while I come from a line of glorified sidekicks. There are no Inspector Heinkels or Silent Sleuth Kikyos among my relatives. Not that I'd expect the heirs to the houses of Lee and Jenny Olja to understand. Huh. So what are you gonna do once Sholmes figures out his career path? Who knows? I can only do what I can. I see. He's almost like a different person when he's not together with Sholmes. Hmm. Hmm? Oh, Idia. I'll not be taking any ridiculous questions about why a knight like myself is now working for some backwater municipal police force. Heinkel! Do not worry. I have not betrayed your father's trust, nor have I turned my back on Eternia. My business is mine alone. Further prying will get no more out of me. Murgaker. I would not object to telling you the tale, but now is not the time. I suggest you desist. Inspector! You must see this, sir! Understood. I'm on... Heinkel... What more can you have to pester me about?
Just, um... Why are you still wearing that? I mean, you don't usually see a crime scene investigator in full plate armor. Ha! Have you ever seen me in anything else? It'll take more than a job change to get me to lay these aside. Not to mention my great shield. Uh, if you say so. Sir! Ah, can you simpletons go one minute without hounding me? What is it this time? It's Madame Golddigger, sir. She's dead. Told you. You owe me a hundred dollars. What's that you say? Pull it. How many viewers we got? And they all of you just put a hundred dollars. She came running, but she was already cold. Did she do this herself? A murder suicide? Hmm. A fine mess this has become. The madam is dead? Oh, say it is not so! Hmm. Madam Goldigger as well? But... but what about the sale? That's hardly... Is it true? Lord Gulliver's wife dead as well? Whitson! Quick to the scene, I see. Yeah, everyone's already here but you, Sholmes. So, Madame Goldigger is also dead. This is surely a case of murder. And just why do you think that, Sholmes? G uh, call it a sixth sense? A, a flash of insight? A, uh, strong hunch? And it tells me now that, uh... That the murderer is hiding beneath that table! Wait, huh? Come, Sholmes, even for you, that's a bit... Hmm? What's that? A note. I shall follow where you go. Did Madame Goldigger write this? She killed herself out of grief over the loss of her beloved husband? Hmm. No. This was surely planted by the murderer to lead us astray. A personal challenge from the true culprit. Hang on, where's the challenge in there? There must be a hidden message. If we look at the first letter of each sentence... There's only one sentence! Oh, enough! We start the investigation from the top. Yeah, what a miserable day. Okay, party chat. <laughs> Stalwart shields. That Heinkel fellow, is he a native of Hearthschild? Pretty sure he is. He's an age of he's an age of Commander Goodman too. At least so Captain Heinkel and the commander could have been childhood friends. One a shield specialist, the other commander of the shield bearers. Do you think they could ever or what? Well, you know, comparing shield sizes, that sort of thing. Well, I'm sure they may have been rivals of a sort. Not that we'll never know for sure. Heinkel never much talked about his life before joining the duchy. Wait, I've got it. Maybe they were rivals for fair Eleanor's hand. Ooh, I like it. I can see it now. A duel of passion atop Eisen Bridge for three days and three nights. Neither would give an inch. Hold on. I feel like I've heard this somewhere before. Lady Victory looked upon young Goodman with favor. Heinkel, bearing the shimmer defeat, stole away from Hearthshell, never to return. That could be it. That settles it. I'm totally going to ask Heinkel. Me too, me too. We'll get the truth out of him if it kills us. So how'd it go? He bopped me on the head with a gauntlet. Me too, but we won't give up. The truth is there. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode off here. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and comment, as well as the channel, and I will see you guys later. God bless, and goodbye.